Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of Joe Boo's Day Job. I'm here, of course, working on the Red Brick House, uh, something we've been working on for a long, long time here, um, and it's getting there bit by bit. Now, today in Waynesboro, Virginia, small town America, uh, really nice place to, uh, nice friendly people, and nice place to live. Um, the talk of the town is not the red brick house. The talk of the town is actually north of Grumman. I just went to the hardware store to pick up some more supplies. And the lady was saying, what do you think about this thing? Uh, you know, this company is moving here north of Grumman. And uh, there's 300 jobs and, you know, all these people that are going to be coming and um, so on. And, of course, it's like, man, well, I hate to tell you, since the pandemic a lot of people have been moving away from the cities and because people have been able to telecommute, um, being further out is actually advantageous where it used to be you wanted to be close to work because you had to get into work. So that migration had already started. In fact, property values have uh, been raising up over the course of the last three years. Um, when one, I mean, just it's just been going through the roof. Uh, properties I used to buy for fixing up for thirty and forty thousand dollars now like one hundred fifty thousand for fixer uppers, and so when you think about the proximity of Waynesboro being right off of Interstate sixty four, and only about five miles away from Interstate eighty one, and only twenty miles away from Charlottesville, the location of the area is actually really perfect. I mean two hours and 20 minutes you can be in Washington DC you're right here smack dab in the middle of the mountains and you're gonna see a lot more people that will be moving down this way so I hate to tell the people that are here the word is already out in the meantime we're gonna keep working on our red brick house here um, it might be warm enough today that I can put the primer on over here I may do that in a little bit I'm still working on the hardwood floor should be not hardwood floor, although antique hard pine is pretty hard. Um, I'm happy to report that the weather stripping on the doors and the extra insulation definitely took care of a lot of the cool spots that we had um, in the house. Um, I still have a little bit more to do in there. And right now, I'll show you what we're doing here on the floor. Um, the floor itself has big gaps in it. Um, with the floor. I could leave those gaps, but they're quite wide that hold dirt and some of them have gotten to be as much as a half an inch. And if somebody comes in with heels, that sucker is going to get in there, boom, break a heel or break an ankle and I don't want to break an ankle. So originally I had been using some of the wood filler in some places, um, but as I've been going through and sanding them, it's cracked a bit. So I'm going back to my other method of basically cleaning out the groove and putting in a piece of wood on there i've gotten most of that side i need to get this section right here and i've already sanded one time with the 24 grit we'll be sanding some more with the 24 grit to get all this stuff even and then we'll hit it with the 36 and then we'll hit it with the 60 the 80 and then the 100 and then it'll be ready to uh varnish um, I think what I'm going to do, at least for now, is I have some quarter inch plywood uh, in the garage. I've got almost three quarters of a sheet of it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece that will fit in here and just put a piece of quarter round on this for now. And we can paint that so that way we won't have any more of the cement and stuff that's loosing falling on the floor. Um, I think that will be the, the wisest move for that. And of course we're going to go through and finish pulling the nails on the wall here clean it up a little bit so it's looking rustic and um, just varnish it so that way it won't peel anymore so I'm gonna get back now that I got my glue from the hardware store get back over here and get all these pieces of wood put in there glue it let it set up and then I can sand it well good morning good people I'm Mark here at the Red Brick House this morning and we are you know we've been under the house doing some um, extra insulation and things. What we've learned is um, we have actually an outdoor thermometer that's also an indoor thermometer and it's 40 degrees outside currently and it's 69 degrees over here which is good because this is at the window. We have the heating and air set up at 70 and so 
what we were having before I did the insulation split. Sorry, got a little stuff on here. Before I did the insulation, uh, extra insulation, it was about a four degree difference here at the window. Found a spot where the wall is right there where the air could kind of infiltrate up into it. So that's definitely better. And what I'm doing is I'm doing the barefoot test. And I'm walking along, I can feel the kitchen floor is much warmer than it was. But as I get right here where there's the beam here, I can feel a lot of cold, a really bad cold spot right here. And in fact, I can feel a little bit of air coming up through there. So there's probably a spot there that I've missed some insulation. We're gonna go through and definitely get that. Um, the seal around the door. This corner right here is so nice and toasty right now. It's great. But we've also, too, this laundry room is a space by itself. And you can really feel how cold this spot is. It does have a register here, but we need to put some more insulation in here, which will also help, of course, with the bathroom. Um, and we can feel, I think, between the house here, we probably need to get some expansion foam and spray between the floor joists and it because it's going up the wall. So we've been taking care of of the spots as we can feel them now that it's colder we can really find them now some people will use the spray in insulation and sh which is definitely seals everything up but the only problem with that is it's made with formaldehyde um, the other place down here the floor is nice and toasty as I walk across it but again as I get over here to the wall between the brick and the uh, framework it's a little bit of cold spots that are right down in there. So I need to go back through and make sure that the insulation is tugged nice in there. But definitely, uh, honey, would you say the house feels warmer? Definitely warmer today, especially now. I mean, consistently warm, where you don't have like a big difference in temperatures. Uh, no. No? I mean, right now, yes. Okay. But as you were doing the heater, Oh, okay. Well, that's different. I mean, we're just, okay, yeah. Because when we were sanding the floors, I turned the heat off and I opened up the window and had a fan on. She's like, yeah, it was cold. You know, but I mean, like right now while we're actually in the space, like I said, we have the heat set at 71 and it's, it's comfortable. It's definitely comfortable in here. All right. So we're going to get back to work here. We're going to be working this morning on the floors. Um, this room has a bit of movement in the floors. And so some of the gaps that I filled in, it cracked and came up. So what I did was I went through painstakingly every gap putting in a wood strip yesterday. And so now I can go through, sand it with the, with the uh, drum sander uh, one more time with the, the 24, go over it with the... Uh, 36 to 60 so a couple hours this will be done thank god um i will have to there's some places where the floor has some dips in it that you're not going to be able to sand the whole floors to meet it so that those parts i'll need to sand by hand but once we do we'll be in good shape all right we're going to get to work and um yeah gonna get to work <laughs>